No one yields. Uh, chair recognizes Ms. Wagner. I uh, thank the chairman very much for bringing us together today, all of us together uh, to commemorate, sadly, this, I can't believe it's been two years since this tragedy, um, this terrorist attack at Abbey Gate. Um, and to each of the families here, uh, as a proud Army mom uh, of, of an Afghanistan veteran, I, I want to know how much, I want you to know how much I thank you for your witness, for your courage, for your strength. Um, you are a, a blessing uh, to us. Uh, you are a blessing to this nation as we hear your stories and we will continue to seek truth and accountability. Truth, answers, and accountability um, to the Schmitz family uh, who live just outside of the second district in the greater St. Louis area and from Wentzville, Missouri and St. Charles. I know we've, we've spoken uh, before young Jared was only 20 years old, and if I understand the story right, he had to ask your permission at 17 um, to enlist early just um, so that he could serve and fulfill that mission that he had grown into. Um, our, our prayers continue to be with you, and your anger, I think, we are all emboldened by that and feel the same anger as you do as we seek answers and accountability here. Um, I would submit to all of you, there was an article put out today. Um, it's a new account. Uh, it's a reporter, a writer uh, from the Atlantic. Uh, his name is Mr. Franklin Foyer, and it details President Biden's horrific failure in Afghanistan, and it confirms in just an excruciating and painful, heartbreaking detail what we knew from the, the very beginning, that President Biden commit, commit, was committed, uh, the United States, to just a deeply flawed and bad plan. And uh, it was obvious from day one that this shameful flight from Afghanistan was going to be uh, a disaster uh, and a humanitarian tragedy. And in fact, it, it was. And what is amazing about this is that the president refused again and again and again to recognize the reality on the ground and fix his mistakes against the advice many experts and advisors. It's hubris, complete and total incompetence and hubris. It was a dishonorable flight from Afghanistan and was a betrayal of our service members uh, and the brave Afghans who lived and worked and fought alongside us, our allies, and the administration needs to own what they did. Again and again, we have directed the State Department uh, in the strongest possible terms to cooperate with our investigation. I want you to know that. Um, and I've been, as all my colleagues have been, uh, to, to the State Department's woefully inadequate readouts and classified briefings, and I've read the overly redacted documents that they've grudgingly uh, provided with disgust. Um, they have done their best to hide the incompetence, but know this, this committee's not gonna stand for it. We are not gonna stand for this. We will not rest until this administration takes responsibility for its failure to see this mission through, to say your children's names. 
we will get that accountability. I'd just like, Mr. Chairman, to go around the room one more time and have each of you say your child's name in a word or two that describes who they are. Sergeant Nicole Leanne G was an encourager for life. Staff Sergeant Darren Taylor Hoover, fearless leader and great protector. My Taylor, Taylor Hoover, champion of people, a lover of human. Army Staff Sergeant Ryan Christian Canals, brave, influencer, full of joy. Hunter Lopez, United States Marine Corps Corporal, noble warrior. Hunter Lopez, Jedi warrior. Lance Corporal Dylan Ryan Marola, lovable, strong Marine, honorable. Kareem M. Nakui, born again Christian. Degan William Tyler Page, huge heart, tough outer shell. Corporal Humberto Bird Sanchez. He was a great defender. Lance Corporal Jared M. Schmitz, compassionate warrior and honorable. Jared Marcus Schmitz was humble and dedicated. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you. Um, 